I, I, I'm kind of bearish on, okay. on, right. on true AGI breakthrough right. because what we built is so useful and economically valuable. Uh, so oh, in a way, good enough, good, good enough as the enemy. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you remember that essay? Um, worse is better. Worse is better. Worse is better. Worse yeah. is better. Yeah, right. and, 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 and so there's like a local, there's like a trap. There's like a local, local maximum trap. Right. We're in a local maximum. Pues bien, todo el mundo no para de hablar de la AGI, la inteligencia artificial general, como si la tuviéramos a la vuelta de la esquina. Pero la mayor parte de la gente ni siquiera se pone de acuerdo en qué significa exactamente la AGI. Hay quien opina que se trata de una IA capaz de realizar cualquier tarea que haga un ser humano. Otros sostienen que llega cuando puede aprender por sí sola las sueltas en cualquier entorno y ya se las apaña. Y hay también quienes creen que ya la tenemos, o al menos una versión primitiva y temprana. Pero según Amjad Massa, director ejecutivo de Replit y el inversor de riesgo Mark Andresen, el problema no está en que definamos mal la AGI, sino en que estamos interpretando mal la IA actual. Porque los sistemas que desarrollamos ahora, esos que programan aplicaciones, crean arte o producen vídeos, quizá no nos acerquen en realidad a una inteligencia general auténtica. Lo que ocurre es que se vuelven más hábiles en algo como completamente distinto, automatizar todo aquello que se puede medir o comprobar. Y eso es precisamente lo que detalla Massad en este primer fragmento. That's a resurgence of, of that movement where we have this amazing generative uh, neural network that is the, the LLM. And now let's layer on more discrete ways of trying to verify whether it's doing the right thing or not. And let's put that in a training loop. And once you do that, the LLM will start gaining new capabilities such as uh, reasoning over math and code and things. Like that. Exactly right. Okay, and then that's great. And then and then the the key thing there though for for RL to work for LLMs to reason the, the key is that, that it be a a problem statement that there is a def defined and verifiable answer. That's right. Is that right? And so and 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 you might think about this as like uh, let's give a bunch of examples. Like in medicine, this might be like um, you know a diagnosis that like a panel of human doctors agrees with, mm -hmm. um, or, or or by the way, or a diagnosis that actually you know solves the condition. Um, in law, this would be a um, you know a, a, a argument that in front of a jury actually results in an acquittal mm -hmm. uh, or, or something like that. Um, in uh, math, it's an equation that actually solves properly. Mm -hmm. uh, in physics, it's a result that actually works in the real world. Mm -hmm. I don't know. In civil engineering, it's a bridge that doesn't collapse, right? Mm -hmm. So, so, so there, there, there's always some some test. Of yet is that okay, the first two do not work very well. Okay, just yet. Okay. Like the the like, I would say, uh, law and healthcare, they're still a little too squishy, a little too soft. Okay, it's unlike math okay. or code. Like the way they're, they're training on math, they're using this uh, sort of like a program language uh, provable language called Lean for proofs, right? Mm -hmm. So you can run a Lean statement, you can run a computer code. Uh, perhaps you can run a physics simulation or a civil engineering uh, sort of physics simulation, but uh, you can't run a diagnosis. Okay. So uh, I would say that... But you could verify it with human answers or, or not. Yeah. So it, that, that's a more or, RL HF ahead. in a way. Okay. So right. it, it okay. is not the like sort of autonomous RL train, okay. like fully scalable autonomous, okay. which is why coding is moving faster than any other domain is okay. because we can we, we, we can generate these problems and verify them on the fly. Este es un punto clave, porque cuando OpenAI, por ejemplo, anuncia que su nuevo modelo de programación también destaca en matemáticas, no significa que un sistema de código haya descubierto de pronto cómo resolver problemas numéricos. Lo que pasa es que al entrenar esa misma arquitectura con datos matemáticos, rinde bien. Dicho de otro modo, no se trata de una inteligencia general propiamente dicha, sino de una transferencia de conocimientos dentro de un ámbito concreto y verificable. Y eso nos lleva a la gran pregunta que plantea a continuación Mark Andresen. ¿De verdad avanzamos hacia la AGI o solo perfeccionamos poco a poco los sistemas que ya tenemos? Echad un vistazo. Curious your point of view on this. Like, there's this weird dynamic that we have. We have this in the office here a lot, and I also have this with like the leading of entrepreneurs a lot, which is this thing of like. Like, wow, this is the most amazing technology ever and it's moving really fast and yet we're still like really disappointed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and like, it's not moving fast enough. Mm -hmm. And like, it's right, like maybe right on the verge of stalling out. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, we should both be like hyper excited, but also on the verge of like slitting our wrists because <laughs> like, you know, so the yeah. gravy train is coming to an end. Right. And and I always wonder, it's like, you know, on the one hand, it's like, okay, like, you know, not all, I don't know, ladders go to the moon, like, just because something, you know, looks like it works or, you know, doesn't mean it's going to, you know, be able to scale, you're going to be able to scale it up and have it work, you know, to the fullest extent. Um, uh, you know, so like, it, it's important to like recognize practical limits and to not just extrapolate everything to infinity. Um, on the other hand, like, you know, we're dealing with magic here that we, I think, probably all would have thought was impossible five years ago or yeah. certainly 10 years ago. Like, I, I didn't, you know, look, I, I, you know, I got my CS degree in the late 80s, early 90s. I, I never, I didn't think I would live to 
see any yeah. of this, right? Like, oh, this is just amazing that this is actually happening in, in, in my lifetime. Um, but, but, but there's a huge bet on AGI, yeah. right? Like whether it's the foundation models, uh, I think you know now the entire U.S. economy is sort of a, <laughs> a bet on AGI, and and there are crucial questions to ask: whether are we on track to AGI or not? Right. Because there are some ways that I can tell you it doesn't seem like we're on track to AGI because we uh, because there doesn't seem to be transfer learning across these domains that are that are you know significant, right? right. And so if we get a lot better at code we're not immediately getting better at like generalized reasoning. We need to go also, you know, get training data and create RL environment for bio or chemistry or physics or math right. or law or so. so and this, this has been the sort of point of discussion now in the AI community after the Dwarkish and Richard Sutton uh, interview where, uh, you know, Richard Sutton kind of poured this cold water on the, um, uh, on the bitter lesson. So everyone was using this, uh, essay that he wrote called The Bitter Lesson, the idea is that there are um, infinitely scalable ways of uh, doing uh, uh, AI research. And, 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 and anytime you can pour more compute and more data and get more performance out, you're just, you, you know, that's the ultimate way of getting to AGI. And some people, you know, interpreted that interview that perhaps he's doubtful that even we're even on a on a bitter uh, lesson path here, right. and perhaps the current training regime is actually very much the opposite, in which we we are so dependent on human data and human annotation and and all of that stuff. Right. So I think that the, I, I agree with you. I mean. As a company, we're we're excited about where things are headed, but but there's there's a question of like, are we on track to AGI or not? And, right. En resumen, quizá el fallo no sea que no avancemos, porque sin duda lo hacemos, sino que lo evaluamos con el objetivo equivocado. Porque aunque nunca lleguemos a esa versión ideal de la AGI, sea cual sea su significado final, podríamos obtener algo igual de revolucionario, lo que más se denomina AGI funcional. En esencia, si logra reunir datos suficientes sobre toda actividad económica y valiosa y entrena su modelo grande para automatizar cada una, no obtienes necesariamente una mente general. Consigues toda una pantalla laboral digital y eso podría ser precisamente el rumbo que seguimos. But that's maybe the other side of it which is they're also putting out for themselves um uh, an reason unreasonable goal. An, an, an unreasonable goal and then yeah. doing this sort of self-flagellation kind of along the way. Right. And, and 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 I I kind of wonder yeah I want I wonder kind of which way that cuts. Yeah, yeah. It, it's an interesting question like I started thinking about this idea of like it doesn't matter whether it's truly AGI and the way I define AGI is that you put in a AI system in any environment and efficiently learns. Right. Um, you know, it doesn't have to have that much prior knowledge in order to kind of learn something, but also can transfer that knowledge across different domains. Um, but, you know, we can get to like functional AGI. And what functional AGI is, is just, yeah, collect data on every uh, useful uh, economic activity in uh, in the world today and train an LLM on top of that or train the same foundation model on top of that. And and we'll, we'll go, we'll target every sector of economy and, and you can automate a big part of labor that way. So I think, I think yeah, I think we're on that track. Right. For sure. Pues sí, estoy totalmente de acuerdo. En los inicios de la IA y de ChatGPT se veía la AGI como un supersistema ultra generalizado, capaz de aprenderlo todo y hacerlo mejor que cualquier persona. Y luego estaba la ASI, la inteligencia artificial superinteligente, como el siguiente nivel, un sistema que superará la inteligencia colectiva de toda la humanidad junta. Pero con el tiempo, a medida que la IA se ha hecho más popular, da la impresión de que esa definición ha cambiado discretamente y ahora se centra más en un sistema de enorme valor económico que pueda ser sustituir el empleo de cualquiera. Y aunque los trabajos reales son sin duda una buena forma de medir capacidades, yo me inclino más por la visión de Amjad Masad. Un ágil de verdad sería un sistema al que lanzas a cualquier escenario con pocos conocimientos previos y se las arregla solo, como una persona muy lista pero más rápido y mejor. Y eso es lo que describe a continuación Amjad, su idea personal de cómo sería una ágil auténtica. Sin embargo, aquí discrepo con él. No está convencido de que lleguemos a conseguirla porque la IA que ya tenemos resulta tan práctica y tan potente desde el punto de vista económico que podría mantenernos anclados justo donde estamos. Mirad esto. So I, 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 I'm of, of two minds, right? Okay. So one mind is the sort of practical entrepreneur. Right. Uh, and I just, I have so many toys to play yeah. with, to build. Like, stop AI progress today yeah. and Repla will continue to get better for the next five years. Yeah. Like, we have so much we could do just on the app, uh, app layer and the infrastructure layer. 
So, yeah. you know, I, but, but I think that will, you know, the, the foundation models will continue to get better as well. And so it's, it's in a very exciting time in our industry. Um, the other mind is more academic yeah. because as a kid, I've always been interested in the nature of consciousness, nature of intelligence. I was always interested in AI and reading the literature there. And I would point to the RL uh, literature. So Richard Sutton, there's a, another guy, I think co-founder of DeepMind, Shane Legg, wrote, wrote a paper trying to define what AGI is. Um, and in there, I think that the definition of AGI, I think, is the is the original, perhaps correct one, which is uh, efficient continual learning. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like if you if you truly want to build an artificial general intelligence that you can drop in any domain, right. you can drop in a car right. without that much prior knowledge right. about cars, right. and within um, you know how long does it take a human to to learn how to drive? You right. know, within months, to be right. able to drive a car right. really well. Right. You so know, gen learn. generalized skill, sort of generalized skill acquisition, generalized yeah. understanding acquisition, yeah, generalized reasoning acquisition. And I think that's the thing that will like truly change the right. world. That's the thing that would give us a better understanding of of the human mind, of human consciousness, and that's the thing that will like propel us to the next uh, level of human civilization. I think yeah. so. So on a civilization level, I think that's that's a really deep question. Yeah. But separate from the economy and the industry, yeah. which is all exciting. But but there's an academic aspect of it that I'm really. And so what? And what odds? What if we're, if we're on if we're on Kelsey today? What what odds do we place on that? I, I I'm kind of bearish on okay. on okay. on true AGI breakthrough okay. because what we built is so useful and economically valuable. Uh, so in, oh, in a way, good enough. Good do, enough is the enemy. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you remember that essay? Um, worse is better. Worse is better. Worse is better. Worse yeah. is better. Yeah. And, and, and so there's like a local. There's like a trap. There's like a local local maximum trap. Right. We're in a local maximum. Local trap. maximum trap where it's because it's because it's good enough for so much economically productive work. Yes, it relieves the pressure um, in the system to create the generalized answer. Yes, and and then you have the weirdos like Rich Sutton and right. others that are still trying to go that down that path, and right. maybe they'll succeed. Right. Uh, but there's enormous optimization energy behind right. the current thing right. that we're hell climbing on this like local maximum. Right, right. Pues sí, esta es una perspectiva interesante que no había oído antes y me apetece saber qué opináis vosotros. ¿Creéis que llegaremos a un máximo local con la IA en el que ya ni merezca la pena desarrollar una AGI de verdad? ¿O pensáis que acabaremos llegando sí o sí? Yo desde luego espero que sí, pero empiezo a sospechar que está más lejos de lo que creíamos, a juzgar por lo que vemos ahora en el sector. En fin, gracias por ver el vídeo. Si has llegado hasta este punto del vídeo, dale like, suscríbete y nos vemos en el próximo vídeo. Déjame saber qué piensas en los comentarios.